Skunkopoly has returned. This is the turn-based territory control game we played the Skunkworx Org. Running month to month, our task forces battle for control of the moons of Crusader. Each moon is divided up into territories with connecting paths between them. The comoray of each moon is also a territory and serves as a connecting node between moons. This is the arena in which our battles play out. Locations have point values and so controlling the high value territories gives more points each round. Some territories give bonuses while others are purely practical. The Comoray for example gives zero points but allows travel between the different moons. Task forces are given two turns per month to move into new territory or to reinforce existing territory. When task forces collide, a battle is arranged between them, with the winner either gaining control or keeping control of a territory. There are rules and limitations to each battle that have changed a lot since we last ran it, but the most important of them is that team size is matched to the smaller of the task forces on the night, and there are a limited number of seats for each vehicle class, fighters, multi-crew ships and armoured vehicles. Crucially, if a team chooses to use a specific vehicle, they must commit to filling all of its gunner seats. While the event runs month to month, the very first stage is what we call the land grab. Here, each task force selects two starting locations from the 12 start territories available. The choices are made round robin style, first round in order of the previous Skunkopoly leaderboard positions, with the second round a reversal of this order. Task force Charlie were the previous Skunkopoly winners, but since the last Skunkopoly, Charlie have shrunk quite considerably due to members leaving to form a new org. So task forces Bravo and Charlie would be working working together for this one and we'd be known as Bravo Charlie for the event. Their first pick in the land grab was Ashburn Aid Station on Stalin. They would have to wait to the final pick for the second starting location. Task Force Alpha chose next as we were second place in the last Skunkopoly run and we chose Aston Ridge on Yena. We'd also have to wait some time for our next pick. Task Force Echo were pickup team in the last Skunkopoly run and would choose private property on Stalin. A surprising pick at this point as nobody had taken territory on Daymar yet. Delta chose Tamden Plains on Daymar and now all three moons had a task force on them. This would make the following choices very interesting as teams would begin to learn what opponents they would be facing the most. Foxtrot have the final pick of round 1, but also the first pick of round 2. This means that they can pick both locations at the same time. Arguably the most advantageous pick. Sony, USR and myself were expecting them to choose two locations on either Daymar or Yela to match strength with either Alpha or Delta. But to our surprise, they chose the remaining two start locations on Selin, Gillette Praveen and Galette. Selin was shaping up to be a very contentious moon for this skunk company. Delta chose to bolster their position on Daymar with Bountiful Harvest as their second pick and Echo would take Eager Flats on Daymar as their second pick. This meant Daymar would likely be a fight between Delta and Echo. We and Alpha also chose to reinforce our position on Yela with Coastal Basin and Bravo Charlie made the final choice with NT999XX as their second location. The pieces were set and the game was ready. Moves are submitted to an independent game controller. Once all task forces have submitted their moves, the moves for the round are shared with the wider org. And here are the moves for round one. On Yela, Alpha moved for Deacons and Jumptown, while Bravo Charlie moved for Art Corp Mining. No battles resulted during this round of moves. On Daymar, Delta moved to Kudre or Closed and Art Corp Mining, while Echo moved for Shubin Mining. Again, no battles on Daymar for this round. But on Selin, while Echo took Terra Mills uncontested and Foxtrot took Trimer Myers, Bravo Charlie and Foxtrot both attempted to take Hicks research. The stage was set for the first battle of this Skunkopoly season, and it would occur at Hicks research. Bravo Charlie were under the command of Carolina Dog and were forming up at Port Olisarm, ready to head into battle. We have 15, we're missing two people. We're missing. Due to low numbers, I'd volunteered to tag along with them for this battle, as it would allow Foxtrot to field one extra player. As our largest task force, Foxtrot has more members wanting to fight than there were slots available within the rules. And getting the opportunity to see another task force in action and show what they can do was something I was excited about. I'd managed to get a few words from Foxtrot members during the day. Uh, big game night. Yeah, yeah, big game night. Big, We're optimistic. We had a, a talk night. from the coach. Yeah. Looking forward to it. We're psyched. As you can tell, morale was high and they were excited about the battle to come. Though in a future video, we will catch up with Foxtrot Commander Mira Corrin as well. For now though, we'd be loading up and heading for selling. 
Hicks Research is a mining outpost with an armistice zone. This meant that the fight wouldn't be at the outpost itself, but at a proxy objective nearby. In this case, an anvil Karak. I'd be tagging along as a raccoon driving the recon cyclone, while Carolina and the other raccoons would be operating ballista. Air efforts would be led by old man Johnny Morgan, a veteran skunk who would be piloting an anvil hurricane. And we'll see his perspective of the air battle along with his gunner, One Punch Down. We'll also see the perspective of Bravo Charlie's Inferno pilot, Boar Darkspear, who also very kindly shared footage from the fight. Uh, we're just having a drink, getting back to our ships. All right, back to your ships, boys. We're, we're, All right, we're oh, Johnny, I'm going to be right behind you. Let's little Johnny was off. definitely not just having a beer. Uh, I bet Johnny was having a beer. He probably was. <laughs> As final preparations were underway, we were all set to get into the first battle of Skunkopoly. Relative settings. I was counting now. Five, four, three, one. Go to go. Fire. Let's go. Gears up. With task forces now in motion, the plan was to drop Ballista at two locations, each around five kilometers from the objective. Signs of Foxtrot were spotted in the sky, but no push from them yet. The engine trails. I got it. 20k ahead. It's at uh, 105. Johnny's got target ahead. I'm seeing it. Okay. No enemies yet, though. I don't see any trails. Oh, no, I got a red above. I got a red. That's no one landed. As Bravo Charlie ships kept an eye on the sky, it was time to deploy the first ballista and cyclone. Go. Go. You out? Same thing. We are out. Cyclone as well. I thought we were dropping second. Okay. No, cyclones out, cyclones out. Yeah. And engine plumes were sighted above. Right at the edge of Crusader in the light. I uh, see it, I see it. Leave him down. Good. You're still there. Good hunting, boys. Good yeah, hunting. Good hunting. You too. Alright. Let it get. There's something high at 24k, too. First ballista's out. First ballista's out. Oh, no way. Uh, that thing high at 24k? Negative. I see a body as there. 9k heading yeah. 0. 0. The drop was further out than expected. The vehicles would have a bit of drive to make. Cyclone is 14 clicks out. Uh, 14, 14 clicks to, 14 clicks to the, uh, to the Karak. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a ways, so it's fine. We're, we're driving then. Ships were seeing the plumes incoming, but both sides were holding back and observing for now. Something's locking me up though. Oh. Hey, you guys don't lock me up right now. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the Gladius is coming in on you guys. Yep. The we, got a we got a contact at 165. I don't have a compass. The Fox Trop ship scouting Bravo Charlie's landing gave Johnny and One Punch Down the chance to start identifying what ships Fox Trot had brought to the fight. He's probably not gonna stick around. This is away. He's turning away. At the one that was okay. Trying to get you guys engaged. Copy that, yeah, just we're, we're, uh, we're skirmishing. 15 kilometers. Is that the one high still? No, low. 890 jump. Albatron. They brought an 890? Yep. Correction. 890 jump. 14 kilometers. Heading 320. We're gonna... No visual. Confirm they have 890 jump. Confirm they have 890 jump, yeah. Okay, they have an 890 jump out here. Okay, Holy cool. Shit. <laughs> and Foxtrot fighters were on their way in, too. I see a target to our left, something free flying. Arizona. To our left. We have about four targets that are to our left of our location of uh, Carolina. Ground vehicles still had a ways to go, but with an 890 jump in the sky and now Foxtrot's main force on approach, the fight was about to begin. Yeah, here they come. They're all on. Oh, yeah. Alright, pull back, Johnny. Got a hurricane and. Yeah, they gotta hurry too. Back. Form on the 
see missiles going out. <clears throat> yeah. All right, we, we want to push on this hurricane. Uh, Johnny, I'm down if you want to go. Yeah, with, uh, hurricane's coming in. Dog pile hurricane. Be ready for flares, though. Nice hit, bud. We are also about 10k from the Carrick at the moment. Not following this job. No, I know. Back on him. I mean, what am oh, I? Man. Four missiles at him? Yeah, you should get shots. Purpose action is that. 890 shooting at us. Can we shoot it or are we just not wasting our ball? Uh, Kill the right. escorts first. I use on nice hit with the on the missiles on the hurricane. Nuggy on you. Dragon's taking his hurricane. With the good range on these uh, Pellions, the size sevens for the 890. Five. Bravo Charlie's ballista were all fully crewed, so could launch torpedoes during transit. But the fighting was at too high an altitude, and both sides were holding strong in the skies right now. Hurricane shields down. Should have shots, guns. Out. Really? Dragon's pulling up on Haze. Haze is on the. Oh, he's on the. What do you call it? Bravo Charlie was starting to get Foxtrot ships to pull back though. Firmus X behind Unagi. Hazred is behind the Redeemer for some reason. Be an easy kill. Need to bring the fight down to us, we can't do anything. Yep. Go for the. Uh, the 890. Redeemer's uh, Bug out. Yeah, bug out, bug out. Swarm the 890. Swarm the 890, but keep an eye out for fighters. His shield's half down. Should we let him know that? Yeah, guys, if you want to bring out the fight towards Carolina, we are currently like 14, 15 K wherever we guys are. Yeah, sorry, we're, we're engaging the 890 in the air. Gladius is right reveal. on our, the tail of the Redeemer, please, somebody. I'm just trying to peel him. Uh, their hurry is super damaged. Foxtrot fighters were heading back in now, and Bravo Charlie's Redeemer was in trouble. Right. Everyone fall back to Redeemer. We're back. Target three guns. Target for Mac on the Redeemer. Ground vehicles were finally arriving close to the objective, and so scouting for enemy forces would come next. Uh, Archie, you ready? Here we go, you're in range. Uh, Q. Yes. We're going to start pushing on the objective. Okay. And we're going to basically, you know, try to empty the clips on these things. And then we're going to be a ground crew on the ground. Hurry's still oh, yeah. alive, too. Yeah. Uh, the hurry's on the. We're going for Wakes. Our uh, Redeemer needs help, boys. 890, 5.3. I sent him a scimitar. Foxtrot's pilots were very skilled, 
but Bravo and Charlie were determined to push them off the Redeemer. Hey, that hurricane is like, it's going down here, doesn't even have control right now. Get out of but it. on the ground, they didn't know it yet, but they were about to pick up the first sign of Foxtrot ground forces. Carolina, I'm picking up something on your on your right if you're facing the Carrick. All it's right. Not, yeah, it's not it's not Q. Let's not let me get out of it. He's red. By right. Okay. Dragon sees his. Okay. You're in range. You're in range. Yep. Oh. Okay. He's just running. He's just running. Yeah. Pull it back. Pull it back to Tyrant. Everyone check on Tyrant. How's the Deemer doing? Tyrant status. Feel okay. Cool. Back on the uh, the 890. Then how's it doing? Bravo Charlie fighters were gaining ground now. Hayes is back. One, their guns. Right in front of us, guns. I don't have angle, it's too high. Two Hayes? On one? And Nagi, you got a couple on you. I'll beat it. I'm in there. Where's my gunner? There you are. Haze it down. Haze it down. Dragon on permanent. Oh, oh. Ryu. Ryu, yeah, you smashed into us. I hate you so much right now, but I love you. All right, we're out. Accidents can easily happen in the sky, and sadly, Old Man Johnny and One Punch Down were taken out in a collision. But for Bordark Spear, the action was just getting started. Uh, try to pull the jump back to the, the ground boys to the ballistas. Because he can take it out pretty fast. We, uh, we just have one uh, arrow, and the uh, main nugget. Wakes us down there, hurricane's down. We're pretty even. Okay. The 890 was indeed dropping in altitude, opening up opportunities for the ballista down below. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay. Come on, lock one. I just got one hit on him. Good. Good hit, good hit. Yeah, another good hit. Another. Hit, 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 hit. Four hits. I am out of missiles. I'm gonna bail. Hit. Okay, okay, um, get back in uh, security. Head out. And start walking. Hit. Towards Another hit. Here. I shouldn't have got out. So. Yeah. Q. The 890 had taken a crazy number of torpedoes, but when both ballistas were empty, it was still in the sky. It would fall to the Inferno and Redeemer of Bravo Charlie to continue engaging as the 890 came in for a landing. You can light it up behind. Uh, Ira, can you make me? Can you get over here? Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying. Oh, good hit, right. good hit. Whoever that was, damn. <laughs> they're they're getting right, yeah. Land. Arrow is on Ray. Okay, 890. Crash. I think I, I think 890 is going down a bit better, yeah, but it looks still... like it's going down hard. It yeah, getting it's getting hit. Yeah, dump your ammo, dump your missiles, try and finish it before they get out as what do you call them? As, as raccoons. But a surprise would reveal itself, gunning for Boy Dark Sphere. Stop! 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 Carolina? Shoot, something shooting over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was about to say. Oh, yeah, that's a. Yeah. That's a. That's a. Hey, Nani Jump is forced landing. Maybe uh, dropping recruits. Hey, they're getting shot at. Centurion on the bottom. Bordark Spear reacted quickly to the Centurion fire, and he had a plan of his own. Hey, they're getting shot at. It's Nani Jump. It's Nani Jump. Keep lining up that back is almost dead. You need to watch if he dropped troops or not. 
PA. Ground forces were regrouping to prep for an engagement below, but the 890 was not going to get away. Keepers of Black on that bomb. Roger. There goes the 890. Origin is down. Origin is down. One air asset left. Arrow. I'm sick of firm. I'm out, right? Okay. Okay, we have one arrow still left. So. Foxtrot air support had all but been eliminated, and Bravo Charlie knew where to start looking for Foxtrot's raccoons. Okay, for the uh, uh, teamer, if they're out of ammo, if they can go ahead and man, oh my god, I see the Centurion right now. Can you get a shot from there? How about Ira? I'm working on it. Personnel spotted. It's not cooperating with me. See, I see it. Yeah, this engage your thing. Yeah, nice hit. Nice hit. Alista is bringing in the last Another hit. arrow. Right above, right above you. Right above you. They are dismounting. Uh, I can see it. Um, yeah, I see an entire fire team. Like I said. Archie, or, uh, Ira, do not go over the rocks. Go around them. Your skyline is bad. I am keeping, I am keeping them suppressed. Oh, oh, sniper took rifle, a slight hit the... From, the, from the Centurion. Sniper fire was incoming, and as we pulled back into cover, we get a close call from something else. Yeah. So look at where I'm pointing. This is exactly where that centurion is. It's right at my Pisces thing too. You more. Copy that. Whoa. Was that? That was missiles from a ground station. Yeah. yeah. There was like I four really of them now. Okay, they got the target. Right. target. I can't tell you guys the direction. There you go. Who the the was on the Centurion? There was sniper fire coming in, but Bravo Charlie were within victory zone of the objective at this point, and so as long as the line was held, they could defend for the remaining time. Alright, I'm heading towards the other. I just got shot. Ground target. Where from? Um, to the left of me. Ground forces. Ground forces. This is Redeemer crew. Caroline, I'll try and get to you now. Can, do you read? How, do you know how close they were to you? They were pretty far. It was a, it was definitely a sniper shot. Okay. Yeah, that, um, that, uh, do you read me? Centurion are in target. I was got nothing, but they're still shooting from that location where that Centurion was. Okay, so they're on that way. I'll copy over. Copy. Uh, we have, we're taking uh, fire from the... I am in kept. I am in kept. Archie, you see where Archie 99 is? That is where they are coming from. Okay, okay. Um, my... Is there any blisters to all play? No. no. Not from our side. Their side, yes. In the hill where the Centurion was, um, there is possibly a blister up there. Possibly. Archie 909 was very active with the sniper rifle for Bravo Charlie as he provided overwatch for raccoon movements. I got one of them though. Good. I have no idea if I double tap them or not. Uh, looks like he's back up. You with me, Ira? He's in flank. Yes, sir. Okay. He pulled him to revive. Katie, go ahead and open up and fire some shots. The Demico is great for marking positions for pilots. As Foxtrot had no air support, I was asked to mark enemy positions to guide Bravo Charlie pilots in. Whoa! Uh, yeah. Katie, okay, okay, go ahead and shoot again. And after a near friendly fire, the pilots shifted over to Foxtrot's general area. Okay, we're moving down. Me and Q are running down. I think, Katie, are you going to come with us? I'll come with you. Yeah, I'm gonna, I don't have a long range weapon, so I'll come with you. Okay, we're going across here. You want to go ahead and. Uh, a handful of Bravo Charlie were pushing up closer to the position. We lacked long range weapons and so could maybe do more by shifting nearer. One is flanking to the left. Yes, I am alive. Yeah. I'm alive. Watch left. Watch left. Okay, keep an eye on your left. Keep an eye on your left. I'm right next to cover. Uh, left uh, in front of Car Carolina, basically. Where's Carolina? Yeah. Two of them over oh, I just got shot. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Get way over there. I I was, all right, you can grab me. I'm out there. I, was hit. I just got the, hit. The rock that is slightly. The other one is running across. Yeah, the they're running through the rocks up here. Like, uh, but the fighters are in a good spot. They're, they're running through the rocks over there. 
I'm gonna try and get into position to I just got hit again, Q did. I'm being sniped. I don't know what direction. I wish I had a better optic. Well, I was in a ballista, I wasn't spun. Tell the tell your um, pilots, if you can contact your pilots, tell them to aim for the top of the hill. There's like a nice, aim, nice. For the, aim for the top of the hill. Uh, tell them I'm gonna put fire on the enemy position now. Tell them I'm gonna put tracers out. They're gonna Katie's putting tracers out, so look where she's shooting. Another one running across the field. Okay. Yeah, percent. Oh, oh yeah. Mm. I might be able to kill myself. Ooh. I'm just blew up. Raid it, Raid, oh, Raid, Raid. Raid's just gone. Foxtrot were punishing with both snipers and railguns, so Bravo Charlie were pushing back to hold the objective. If they could defend for just a little longer, they would be able to claim victory. Archie 999 would stay in position to provide sniper cover and was getting off a lot of shots. Just letting you no know guys that I'm on my last uh, five magazines of P6. <laughs> I, I, give you P6. I fired like 20 something, more than 20 magazines. 21 minutes left. Like from the nose of the carrot, like use the use clock face from the nose of the carrot. 12 o'clock. Other side of that crater. Okay. They're still a ways out. Quite a ways out. Yeah, they're still quite a ways out. If we had a sniper rifle, you could hit them. Carolina Dog had received a tier one head injury during the pushback and now could barely see anything. He had a sniper rifle, and because of lack of vision, he would offer it up to be used. There wasn't much time remaining before the one hour battle timer was up, and as far as we could tell, Foxtrot was still making their way in from a great distance. Cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll take those shots for now. This is very, this is very annoying. Can somebody belt feed my P6? Because I, I always hit, I always hit them with my last two shots. Oh, okay. I see where the rockets are. I see where the fire is. Okay. Yeah. Check for them behind now. that. The big black rock. Yeah, the big black rock that it's below the hill. Yeah. Okay. There okay. should be around three guys there. Looking. Okay. I was got eyes. We got uh, we got them moving at our ten o'clock from the Carrick. Ten o'clock. They're moving to the nine o'clock. See two personnel. I'm Carrick. Carrick. They're close to Q. Yep, what, Q. what kind of range are you looking Which at? Way? About two to three hundred. Oh shit! Okay, they're coming in. Got hit. No it sounded like Foxtrot were closing range and moving to the flanks, and Bravo Charlie would start to receive some hits. I don't think I can push anymore. From here, because they know I'm here. Yeah. You know he's painting. Right now. I see uh, shots going out. Where are those shots from? They're in. I think they're incoming. Dragon's in capped. If anyone can get to me. It was the closing minutes of the fight, and we'd lost sighting of the enemy. Nagi's putting fire down. From uh, oh crap! I just got shot. Uh, trying to get B Dragon up. I was moving to Q. I don't see anything back here, so I'm falling back. Yeah, I see uh, shots fired from the other side of the, on the crater. Keep it, keep those people suppressed. Ow. And while covering the flanks, suddenly a real push would start in a cluster of rocks just in front of the Karak. Uh, uh, Air's got eyes on a raccoon. Uh, shit, I can't see the Karak anymore. I'm just got shot in a 10 o'clock uh, position. Some RG position. How far? Missiles are dry. No missiles. The fighting was happening in a little crater in front of the Karak, a depression that was filled with large rocks, making visibility tricky. Oh. You got him down? Yeah, he went down. He crumpled. I don't know if he's dead, though. He just got shot at again. Uh, two times. <laughs> got hits on him. Got hits on me. I'm down. I'm in cap. There's, I see two raccoons. Enemy raccoons. At least two. Okay, the one behind is starting to push up as well. How many minutes is there officially? I got one, I see one, I see one. Over by Ira, moving past Ira now, he's moving past Ira towards the carrot. It looked like the fight was gonna come down to who had the most active remaining members within 750 meters of the objective. So reviving teammates right now is very important. Okay, I'm gonna push over and get and, and, and try and get Ira. Cool. Most appreciated. Cool move. Greg's sure. trying to cover, but I don't see him. Yeah. I'm crawling up on your left. left. Yeah. Arch. Yeah. But as I carefully move towards Ira, we get the call. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
Hold on, hold on. No, 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 I, I'm moving in, towards uh, you. Mello is in the jack saying, hold time, time. Okay. Uh, Alright, it's time, time. Uh, Una, quit firing. Do we, do we win? Hey, good job, guys. Nice. Right, we did. Hey. everyone. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out in a second. Well, we're sitting at the good carousel. Job, even yeah. with Ryu working on their side, we still won. <laughs> <laughs> so the final count of active members within the victory zone was 10 for Barbara Charlie and 4 for Foxtrot, which makes Barbara Charlie the victors and gives them control of Hicks research. Both sides had fought extremely well though in a very strong opening battle for this new season of Skunkopoly. Well done to all skunks involved. Rackham, our, our, yeah. our ground team lead, cra was the guy who cr one of the guys who crashed immediately. So uh, that threw a wrench yeah. in the Yeah, so um, that went. Th uh, no, that's that's here. exactly that's yeah. exactly how I planned it. So I wanted to <laughs> crash to desktop as soon as possible. Um, okay, that way, no I ability could, to command. Exactly, that I could place 100% blame and take all credit. Uh, we, in, in terms of our general strategy, I'll try to keep it pretty brief. Our goal was to take dragonflies as quick as safely possible to make it to the opposite side of the crater, and then set up a perimeter around a divot or crater in which to put the ballista so that we could defend them while they engaged with the air. Our ballista, because it took such a long trip, wasn't really able to fire on its way, so it couldn't really help out much with the air battle. Once the ballista got to its actual position, it sounds like we had some problems with it being able to effectively use its weapons. So by the time it fired, it was not very effective from that position. Uh, you guys did a fantastic job flanking into the main crater getting into the main objective. There was lots of chaos. You guys were putting really good pressure on from your infantry and your close air support. I don't know if your infantry was calling in, you know, visual or with grids, but you guys did a really good job applying pressure there. At the end of round one, Bravo and Echo are out in the lead, but this round was always going to be a quieter one. And I have no doubt that round two will see many more battles taking place for control of the moons of Crusader. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our amazing patrons with a very special thanks this week to Binary Ninja, a fellow skunk and raven in Task Force Alpha who very generously increased his pledge support on Patreon recently. And all I can say is thank you so much. It means a lot, Binary. We'll be back with more from Skunkopoly at Skunkworks next month. And if you want to get involved with this kind of action, come join us on the Discord link in the description of this video.